FAA's desperate decision to stop SpaceX Starship orbital test flight. For several years, SpaceX has been consistent with building the Starship rocket with the goal of developing an interplanetary vehicle capable of transporting goods and crew to the Moon, Mars and beyond. The Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, has been wary of SpaceX, citing concerns that the company's operations may harm habitats in our ecosystem. It's not that the FAA wants to be a nightmare for Elon Musk's multi-billion dollar dreams or company, SpaceX, but they have to perform their duties, which will include air traffic management, aircraft certification, airport standards, and protection of US assets during the launch or re-entry of commercial space vehicles. As a result, the organization has been hell-bent on regulating SpaceX's rocket launches and operational standards in accordance with their policy. However, it looks to be terrible news for SpaceX. And why on earth would the FAA want to be an impediment when it is attempting to benefit mankind, particularly in the aspect of commercial space travel? Instead of causing difficulties for the company, they should be thinking about how to assist SpaceX accomplish its goal of conquering space. We will discuss how FAA is watching SpaceX with an eagle eye and at the same time refuse to allow the company to achieve their first orbital test flight. This is TechSpace. If you're new here, we specially invite you to join many of our lovely fans. Kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell. It motivates us to produce more fantastic content like this and you'll have a lifetime access to all of our high-end tech videos. It seems that the FAA has forgotten that history repeats itself. Some years ago, Nostradamus said that flying items and flying human transportation will become a norm in our society, but people of that time called him crazy. Fast forward to this present day, where Elon Musk is trying to make the prophecy a reality. Why would FAA become the demon to hinder SpaceX prosperity? The company has implemented all sorts of engineering concepts to achieve this kind of accomplishment that would astound the world. But the FAA is now playing a difficult game with SpaceX, much like the FBI does with criminals. SpaceX installed the components needed to stack the outer engines on the Super Heavy and to fuel the rocket a few weeks ago. They would have been able to stack it, but there's no way they could have totally stacked it and launched it immediately. And, as far as I know, the plumbing for the Starship side isn't finished either. So if they really wanted to launch both stage of the Starship after setting it up, they would have to fuel the Starship, then pull it up and stack it on top of the Super Heavy. But for now, that seems like a mere dream. SpaceX's next remarkable achievement will be to launch a fully stacked version of the Starship, and Super Heavy rocket combo beyond Earth's atmosphere and into space. The company is theoretically prepared for that stage, but if the FAA's recent call for public views on issuing a launch license is any indicator, that regulatory permission might take much longer than a month to materialize. Although the company intends to perform many Starship programs over the next few years, in order to carry out these programs, which will undoubtedly result in the launch of the Starship, a permit or vehicle operator license granted by the FAA is required. SpaceX hopes to execute the first ever orbital test flight of a Starship vehicle from Starbase shortly, but that won't be possible until the FAA completes its study. Before issuing this permit to SpaceX, the FAA agreed to create a Programmatic Environmental Assessment, or PEA, which examines the possible environmental implications of the launch activities undertaken at the Starbase site in Boca Chica, Cameron County, Texas. The government stated an expected completion date of which they will get back to SpaceX on the hearing, and the date was stipulated to be soon. Weeks earlier, FAA posted a draft evaluation of the Starbase assessment and invited the public to comment on it. They subsequently claimed that they received more than 17,000 written comments on the document during that period. Around October, the FAA also hosted two public hearings on the assessment via Zoom. According to FAA authorities, they received around 121 vocal opinions during those sessions. These 121 vocal comments were primarily from SpaceX supporters. Both fans and foes of SpaceX were highly loud, raising a number of problems that the FAA will have to consider and address with SpaceX before moving forward. The FAA may have considered answering some of these concerns by giving a temporary license for the purpose of a test and reconsidering existing launch licenses in the heat of this moment. The almost four-hour hearing drew both passionate support for SpaceX's ambitions to expand its Starbase facility and aggressive opposition. Nearly five dozen individuals spoke during the Zoom hearing. 
According to an informal count, there were around 39 comments in support of the proposal and 18 comments against it. The responses in support of SpaceX were more likely to come from outside the state, from those who were generally pleased with the company's efforts to give humans a taste of living in space. There were many local supporters as well. This demonstrates that there are many SpaceX enthusiasts all around the world, and they will go to any extent to ensure that SpaceX succeeds in whatever space exploration adventure which will benefit humanity. The handful 18 opponents who came out against the proposal were later investigated to reside in Brownsville, Texas. They might also claim a variety of environmental issues, such as the destruction of a wildlife habitat as well as impacts on the South Texas population, such as industrialization. They described how SpaceX plants in Boca Chica, Florida sprang up near Cape Canaveral and caused environmental damage in the area. But on the contrary, Rohan Joseph, who identified himself as an aerospace engineer, lifelong environmentalist and birder, cited the protection of sea turtles at launch sites in India as an example of the positive effects of a launch site on an area. And there have been no reports of disasters in aquatic life from one of SpaceX's Starlink companies, Starlink Satellite Communications Private Limited, which is based in India. If SpaceX were an oil exploration company, no questions would be raised, Joseph said. He also asked why SpaceX seemed to be getting so much criticism for their launch location when there was an old oil drilling site nearby, or why, if the ecosystem was so clean adjacent to South Padre Island, had been allowed to grow. A lot of supporters highlighted how the initiative may inspire a new generation of Texans. Gail Lafarm, a certified nurse in Texas, works with young schoolchildren and said that their eyes light up whenever SpaceX's topic is raised. This could virtually mean that people running up to undo SpaceX are either haters of Elon Musk or SpaceX, or they are completely against humans traveling to space and not the acclaimed environmental pollution or disaster. The FAA has yet to decide whether an experimental orbital launch will be granted and also licensed. The first SpaceX orbital flight planned for the Super Heavy rocket to separate from Starship is a little more than two minutes after launch from Boca Chica and splashed down 20 miles offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department is among those that are concerned about the Starship program. Chief Operating Officer Clayton Wolf stated in a letter to the FAA around November that the agency had issues about the draft PEA. Analysis is insufficient in certain areas in describing and evaluating all potential impacts of SpaceX's proposed activities. Furthermore, the draft PEA gives findings but no evidence from investigations, research projects or the best available science to back those conclusions up. The letter acknowledges that the FAA has assessed that the Starship program is likely to have an impact on 10 federally protected species, and it contains 16 pages of detailed comments and recommendations for reducing such risks. Similarly, the Nature Conservancy Texas expressed concern to the FAA about SpaceX's current and planned activities at Boca Chica and questioned whether a PEA is adequate to address the full scope of direct and indirect impacts to Boca Chica's unique and highly productive natural environment, which have been conserved through substantial public investment and should not be compromised for a private enterprise. These authorities, particularly the FAA, should not be an obstacle to SpaceX's launch strategy even in the near future. Will they be able to keep SpaceX running indefinitely, especially when the company formally launches commercial spaceflight and hundreds of starships are launched and run into the moon on a regular basis? The FAA, which is a government body, should not be against SpaceX's success and the Starbase, but rather should find a way to assist the company's efforts. Elon is working to serve humanity better, not just for his own gain. Do you think the FAA will ever approve SpaceX to launch the full-stacked Starship? Please do well to share your thoughts in the comment section below. Until next time, please like, share, subscribe and whilst you're still around, why don't you click on one of those flashing videos on the screen for more content.